Today I'm going to talk about my top 10 games for couples. At number 10 is Agricola All Creatures Big and Small, designed by Uwe Rosenberg. This is a smaller brother of Agricola, the classic worker placement game, and we're still collecting resources and building farms here, but it's a much shorter, um, simpler game. But the great thing is it's still got that same tension. I haven't got enough wood to build the fences. There's that satisfaction of having started with nothing and at the end of the game you see the farm that you've built. This is where I keep the sheep. And this is where I keep the pigs. And I don't mean to gender stereotype, but there's also the cute factor. Hello, I'm a sheep. Hello, I'm a sheep too. Hello, I'm a sheep three. If you like worker placement games, then this is a great short one to play with your partner. And if you've never played worker placement games before, then this could be a great introduction to the genre. The game, at number nine, is The Game, designed by Stefan Bendorf. You might know this game, The Game, from such internet posts as What the Hell is The Game? Why the Hell is The Game nominated for Spill de Jahres? And who the hell named it The Game and how can we punish him? The Game. Why have I been playing all the other games when I could have been playing THE Game? The Game is a simple co-op game. You each have a hand of six or seven cards, and there are four piles in front of you, two going down from a hundred, and two going up from one. And on your turn, you have to place at least two of your cards into one of those four piles. The twist is, you can't tell the other players what cards you have. Why did you put it there? But you can try to guide them. Don't put any cards on that pile, that pile, or that pile, okay? If you have a card that's ten back from one of the cards on the table, you can play it, resetting that deck by ten, giving you some breathing room. Just resetting the deck. Don't worry about it. The aim is to get rid of all of your cards, and that's it. It's a simple, quick game, and the pleasure of playing with your partner is there's this telepathy required to working together. Put it down on any deck you want. Any deck you want. Any of the decks. I'm trying to. <coughs> Not that one. There are better co-op games out there, but the reason I included the game on this list is that I think every couple's collection should have a simple co-op card game, and it's really portable too. Another one to consider is Hanabi, but be careful, it can lead to arguments. Okay, I'm gonna put this one What's down. That? You said it was red. No, I didn't. I said it was blue. If we lose our jobs as fireworks experts, John, it's gonna be your fault. And number eight is Carcassonne, designed by Klaus Jürgen Vreda. Carcassonne was our first couples game, so it's fallen down the list a bit just because we played it so much. It's a classic for a reason, and it's fun laying tiles and building a city together. But it's also as competitive as you want it to be. Some people see it as a cutthroat game, whereas other people complain that it's too relaxed. But that's the great thing, is you can choose whether to just focus on your own thing. I'm just going to build my monastery here by my castle, and let the nice man farm the land so he can feed his family. Or to go out of your way to sabotage your opponent. And I'm going to put my road here, so you'll never be able to finish your castle, and your man will never be able to leave. And that's why I think Carcassonne's a great game for couples. You can play it how you want. You can really focus on it and get competitive and think about your strategy. Or you can just kind of have a relaxed Sunday building a city together. And number seven is Battle Line, designed by Rainer Knizia. Easy to learn, hard to master is a running theme of this list, and this is a great example of it. Battle Line is a simple, classic two-player card game. There are nine flags lined up on the table, and you're playing cards on your side to try and win that flag. You either need to win three adjacent flags or five in total. And you're playing poker star hand, so it's either a straight flush, a three of a kind, a flush, or a straight. And the strongest hand wins a flag. You only have seven cards in your hand, so you have to gamble on the cards that you hope to get in the future. And you have to decide, do you want to focus on the flags that you want to win, or try and stop your opponent from getting the flags that they want. This is a great game for couples because it's quick, it's easy to learn, and you're going head to head with your opponent, but there's no aggression, there's no hurt feelings, you can't sabotage the other player, you're just doing what you need to to win. And number six is CV, designed by Philip Malinsky. CV is one of the rarest of things, a light game with a really strong theme. It's a game about life. You have goals, ambitions, I want to be an activist. You start with childhood memories that help you on your way. Science club taught me so many things. And soon you're getting jobs. 
I'm leaving my stupid job as an intern and getting a job at my dad's company. Creating new relationships. I made a new friend at work. Oh, and I'm having a child. But, but we were careful. Wait, who's this friend at work? I want a paternity test. Stop it, don't say that. Expanding your mind. I've got a PhD. What has your friend from work got? Looking after your health. I'm riding a bike now, it's better for the baby. And by the end of it, you've lived a rich and varied life and collected a lot of stuff. I've got an art collection, a sports car, a mansion and a yacht. See, I don't need you or the baby. The artwork is sublime and really helps bring the theme to life. But it's also the Yahtzee style dice rolling mechanism that works with this theme. Like you play King of Tokyo and you don't understand why your monster can only do the things that you roll on your dice. But what cliched analogy works better for life than throwing the dice and seeing what you get? Like you might want that job as a CEO really badly, but luck isn't going your way. Damn it, I needed knowledge. You could gamble on it, waste a reroll, but the odds would be stacked against you. Or you could put your efforts into something more attainable. I guess I'll just take up marathon running instead. The more experience and relationships you develop, you get tokens that you can use towards future purchases. And it will make thematic sense too that there's wicked humour to it. Because if you go to the gym, then it's suddenly easier for you to make relationships. And you can have a child which will make you happy, but it will cost you a money symbol each turn. Having bad luck locks up your dice so you have less options, and if you roll three bad luck symbols then you lose your job or a relationship. It's a mechanism that we've seen in other games but it makes great thematic sense here. And you can have good luck too, if you roll three good luck symbols you can buy any card you want for free. Well I didn't have any of the relevant experience, but I got the job! It's a light game and it doesn't have much player interaction but I like that about CV and that's why I think it's a great couples game because you can just kind of chill out and enjoy the theme. Not every game has to be a hotly contested brain burner. And if you do want more interaction there's always the expansion CV Gossip where you can play gossip cards onto other players CVs to hold them back. <laughs> And number five is Patchwork by Uwe Rosenberg. Who would have thought a game about sewing a patchwork quilt would be any good? Well, I didn't, and then I tried it, and here we are at number five in the list. This is such a satisfying two-player game. You're buying puzzle pieces, effectively, for your patchwork quilt, and it's got this real Tetris feel where you really want to complete it and finish your puzzle. There's a real pace to it. A player's turn takes no time at all, and there's a race feeling too because you want to be the first person to complete your 7x7 seven seven grid and get the coveted 7 points. And I'll buy that piece, put it here, and get the 7 points. <sighs> it has the perfect balance for couples, it's highly competitive but never to the point of aggression. For example, you're trying to get ahead of your opponent to get those free single square patches. Yes! My quilt is going to look so f Sweet. It's such a quick game too, but with so much depth. I mean, I wasn't expecting to be a fan of an abstract game like this, but this one really hit the spot for us. I'm a big, big fan of Patchwork. <laughs> and number four is Paperback, designed by Tim Fowers. Paperback is a deck building word game where you're using letter cards to build words to get points to buy more letters so that in the future you can build bigger and better words. Before modern board games came along and saved us all, there was one couple's board game, Scrabble. But Scrabble had two problems with it. Firstly, analysis paralysis, taking too long over your turn. I could go there. I could go there, I could go there. Come on, is Jepfalg a word? And secondly, that the longest words weren't always the best, they didn't get the most points. Fluctuation. That's 19 points. Vent. V-E-N-T. Double letter on the V, triple word score. 33 points. Paperback fixes both of these problems. Firstly, it helps you focus on just creating the word. There's less options going on, so there's less analysis paralysis. Usually, once you've used all your letters to create a word, you're happy. And you can be creating a word during the other person's turn, which speeds the game up even more. Secondly, Paperback does reward the longest, most creative words. I've got Fluctuation, 40 points. I've got Vent, which is 8 points. 
Paperback is just a purer word game. It's much quicker. It's great for couples because you're never going to get annoyed at the other player. It's got this brilliant box that makes the game super easy to set up. The artwork's great. You can play co-op if you want. And there's all these other mini expansions to give you different variants of playing the game. As far as I'm concerned, Paperback is a Scrabble killer. And number three is Arboretum, designed by Dan Kassar. If you were to ask me the two words that best describe a game about planting trees, would you believe it is stress and tension? Before I played Arboretum, I read the term hand management describing games and I never really got it. I just thought it just meant organising cards in your hand. I didn't really see that there was much management required. Arboretum is more than just hand management. It's hand obsession, hand desperation, hand regret. I can't discard that. I can't discard that. I can't discard that. I can't discard that. Can't discard that. Can't discard that. And I can't discard that. Okay, let's try again. Well, I definitely can't discard that. 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 At the end of the game, you only score trees in your Arboretum if you have the highest value card of that type in your hand. So you're desperately trying to hold on to cards in your hand, but also trying to hold on to the cards of the trees that your opponent has to stop them from scoring their trees. Every decision in this game feels so important. From the tile placement of where to plant your trees. If I put this here, then I could still get the four lilac and put it there. To which cards to let your opponent have when you discard. It's so hard building an arboretum. Arboretum is a simple, perfectly crafted card game with incredible amount of depth. It has beautiful artwork and it is fiercely competitive without ever being aggressive. The perfect spot for me for a couples game. And number two is Pandemic, designed by Matt Leacock. Pandemic is a cooperative game where players are working together to defeat a global pandemic. Not only is it a great game, but this is an experience that will bring you closer as a couple. It's a stress that you have to overcome together. Oh no, another epidemic. If Madrid outbreaks, there'll be a chain reaction in London. The shared misery when you fail. It's not your fault. But millions are dead. It's not your fault. <laughs> no one made it out of Madrid alive. Pandemic creates a unique bond between you and your partner. It's science. If you go through a traumatic experience together, you remember that. I was just thinking about the time we got overrun in Asia by red cubes. I couldn't get there in time. I, I thought we'd have more time. And one day, finally, you get the feeling of achievement. Working together, you defeated the game. We did it! Make love to me on this board. Yes! I'd also recommend Flashpoint Fire Rescue or other co-op games, but for me, Pandemic hits that sweet spot of light rules, good play length, and a really effective experience. For more thematic flavour, check out the In The Lab expansion. It renews the tension if you've already beaten the base game. We've played this four times now and we still haven't won. And number one is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, designed by Raymond Edmonds, Suzanne Goldberg and Gary Grady. This isn't a board game. There isn't a board. This isn't a card game. There are no cards. There are no plastic or wooden pieces. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is an experience. There are 10 cases to solve. You start at the crime scene. You read out the introduction, written in the style of a Sherlock Holmes novel. Just as we alight from our cab in front of 221B Baker Street, a derby hat skitters by, propelled by the fierce wind. Then you decide where to go next to search for clues. You've got today's newspaper that you can read, which may have hints about the case. You've got the directory where you can look up names of people involved and go and visit them. And you've got a map of London. I think we need to talk to the victim's wife. No, she won't know anything. Let's go to his workplace. And immediately you're in the theme. You're making decisions like a detective, chasing down leads. You read something in the newspaper about the German ambassador. It might not be connected, but you've got a hunch. This might not be connected, but I've got a hunch. You look up the German embassy in the directory and you go and visit him. And you read out the encounter. Sometimes the leads are dead ends. But the feeling you get when one of your hunches pays off is a feeling that I've never had in any other board game. Yes, I was right, he was at the theatre. I recommend you play this game cooperatively. You're reading out the encounters together anyway, and it's so much more fun trying to decipher it together. You'll solve parts of it and your partner will solve the rest. You're like Holmes and Watson. 
Elementary, my dear Watson. I'm not Watson, you're Watson. Of course you're Watson. I've got the coat. I love this game. I loved it within the first five minutes of playing it and I've loved it ever since. There's no other game out there like it, although I wish there was. It's just a brilliant experience from start to finish and the feeling you get from solving a case, it's even better than beating Pandemic. And that is my top 10 couples games. Let me know what you think of my picks in the comments and I'd love to hear what your favorite couples games are. Like this video if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more and if you wanna follow me on Twitter, it's at actuallol. I've been John Perkis, thanks for watching.